the other way, and I know it's vertical in the other plane. So that is a top job, excellent. Now we can move on to the controls. First up, the cyclic. <laughs> Putting the cyclic controls together is not too tricky. Most of it can be done on the bench. You start with your drawing, because that'll kind of refer to everything, all the parts you need to put together. It's all dual controls, this helicopter. So you've got two control sticks there. They attach into two cyclic clevises here, which will attach to this, which is the cyclic main shaft that goes across the helicopter, which connects these two together so they move in the same orientation. And it's then a load of nuts and bolts to put it together. And we start with the clevis. Just has a couple of nylon bushes, and then it slots over the cyclic shaft weldment. And there we go. Next job is to fit the dual lateral tube. They have these little rod ends that are threaded into either end, and they just screw in. Then flip over the weldment so that I can drop the bolts through. There we go. And there you got it. We have dual control. Now to put it on the ship. Two bits to put in finally. Bit one, bit two. And this just slots in to here. Right, so there we go. All dry fitted together. We've got forward movement, aft movement, and then dual controls are linked together laterally. The only thing to go on here still, obviously, to connect the controls here up to the top of the main rotor shaft are the control cables themselves. There'll be two that will come through and fix onto the frame here, which will be connected to the weldment there. And there'll also be two more cables that will fit onto this bracket here for the lateral movement like that. Excellent stuff. Imagine what this is going to be like when the machine guns are connected. Got to attach this, the throttle grip sleeve, onto this, the end plug. And that's just held in with a roll pin. It's pre-drilled at the moment, so it slots in there. A little roll pin in the top. And then, gently, give it a bit of a bash. There we go. Sorted. And then the whole shaft fits down the length of the collective handle. Let me just slide that in one end. So it's a little bit stiff at the moment because it's still covered in its protective layers and if I strip that off it'll rust very quickly so just a little bit of a squeeze down for now. That's sorted out which put another one of these B control arms. There you go. And then it's just the bolt through and the nut on the other side. So that's the B control arm on. Now I need to put on this bit, number 8, E159030, the throttle connector, and yes, you guessed it, because it's got some welding on, it's a weldment. Right. One of the things that I love about this project is that it's very modular. You build something on the bench and you then fix it to the airframe. Mind you, not saying it'll last like that because once we've got a few more bits on it, it'll probably get a lot more complicated. So that's on there like that. And then finally, it's not going to go on now, but finally there will be the passengers. Collective handle will go on which means either we'll be able to do the throttle there and also the collective and the same from the pilot's side. Now you may be wondering why there's this odd sickle shaped bit of metal at this end and that's because at full throttle which is round here it acts as a stop by hitting the shaft. If that wasn't there there's a possibility that this could go over further and actually go back under here which means when you then try and 
de-throttle, actually you're pushing it the wrong way and it's jammed on full throttle. So it's just a safety, very simple but very effective safety device. So some cables to attach to this obviously which will go to the engine to the throttle. But that's that sorted. So we've done the cyclic, done the throttles, done the collective. Now there was one more control. Yes, direction, anti-torque, that'll be the pedals. So this will slot through here, like so. And number two. Goes in like so. Three and four. We'll go here. So if we put that on first, pedal two there. My next spacer. Then pedal one. Last spacer. That's pedal three. Next spacer and the last pedal. The which is in there. There. Which is a bit of a squeeze. It will go in, but I'm not going to put that in yet because I've got to make some scissors. Yes, you heard me right. Some scissors. These are they, a couple of scissors, not like the kind of scissors you cut things with, but very important bits of kit that will fix up here and will swivel. The hole here will connect with a connector rod to the bottom of this right hand pedal, the other side here, down to here, that when one pedal moves forward, the other one will have to move backwards. And there's one scissor for this side and one for the pilot side. First job is to knock in some nylon bushes. side one in tiny amount of grease and then the bolt goes in from there so now we're ready for some connector rods It's a very simple piece of engineering, but look at that. One forward, one back. Superb. Now, all the kit's on the aircraft, but it's got to be connected up to the bits it controls. I need some control cables. Yes, even the control cables come in their little packages. E14 card 4F and E14 card 3F. Which one shall I start with? 3F. Three cables down, one to go. It's the last... Well, the second one of the collective cables just slots through there. This is very like putting the brake cables on your bike when you're about 10. But of course, this is a big boy's toy, so they're bigger cables. And then through into the control T and some nuts on the end of there. Now, these nuts will be changed for self locking nuts later when we set it up. But for now, that's cool. Right, to the other end. So that pops up there, like so, just feed that in, put on the lock washer and a lock nut. Now the reason that this has two cables for each of these controls is one because that's a safety measure obviously because if one snaps you've still got some control but also because when these are tensioned they will be tensioned against each other and that will then move this, which is a rod end on a control T, which fits on the top of there, like so. Just drop that down and put the lock nuts on. And it will move it into the perfect position to fit in this clevis. And then the job, as they say, is a good one. Now, you may be wondering why it is that you as the builder have to cut your own drive belts from one big belt. Well, there's a very good reason, and that's because you need to guarantee that all the belts are exactly the same length, which, of course, they will be if you cut them from one master belt. Now, I need two ridges and a groove in between for each belt, like so. And then with the knife up from the other side, it's then a steady old process of just cutting away from you 
down that groove. And it doesn't need to be a precise straight line because I will sand the rough edges off after each belt is cut. 